שלום 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 אבי שמידיה אלי יאו תנקס פור קאמן סו any points they want to make, feel free, okay? This is just an idea that Hashem gave me last week. It was in my mind. And this uh, is what Hashem, you guys will appreciate it. It's okay. So the shiur is going to be about Islam, Islam, feminism and the left okay so what's the connection it seems on the surface that there might be a connection that we all know of course between feminism and the the pol- the political yeah. that's obvious okay Hmm? Okay. So let's start. So, no, it's fine. so we know, so let's start. We know that the symbol of Islam, right, is what? The moon. The moon. So let's draw one here. The crescent moon, right? That is how they represent themselves. Now, in, in uh, Torah, we also see that the moon represents the female, okay? Moon equals femininity. Femininity, yeah? Female, yeah. right? So how is it related to Islam? How, what do we, what can we derive? That in, that in fact, Islam is feminine. It's a spirituality that gains all its, it's, it's basically, it's basically the spiritual manifestation of the female. Okay, how do we see this? We know that in the West over the last, let's say 200 years or so, there was um, the rise of, 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 uh, of uh, my science, right? Usually called in history, the enlightenment. Right, enlightenment, enlightenment, right? Started around in these, let's say, the late to do the, uh, the mid to late 1700s. Well, basically there was a move in Europe, which started in Germany, where they basically said, they basically said to the to the church, we don't need you. Before then, basically, when it came to culture, uh, knowledge, education, politics, the church was everywhere. Right? Yeah. Right? So around that time became the, the was the flourishing of science and reason so what did they uh they uh, do they basically said we're going to refute we're going to set aside christianity right in in and in, in exchange we're gonna basically worship science and the human uh the 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 human uh reason right 
Now, why was that bad? It seems good because the church did a lot of bad things, right? And it was seeming to, um, was seemingly stalling the advancement of society. So it seemed good. However, it was bad. How? We know that Christianity, we know that the Torah, right? The Torah, where does it, where is it from? The Torah is from Za of Atzilut. Okay? The Torah is from Za of At. So the the seven uh, no so the six uh, yeah the six lowest filot of the world of Atilut, which is the world right underneath Adam Kad Kad one okay so that's where the Torah is from. Now we know that Za is masculine, right? And Mahut is feminine, okay? Za is represented by, by the sun, okay? Za is, re is, is represented by the sun, like the, you, by the sun, okay? And the sun, in our Torah tr tradition, is always the masculine, yeah. and the moon is always the feminine. Now, Christianity, you know, is the klipa of the Torah of Zah, right? So we have the Torah that we know, the written Torah and the oral Torah. And the klipa of it is Christianity. That's why they have an extra book. The extra book is a klipa, okay? So that, for example, for example, those of us who, which is, I think, is most of us who come to Jew to uh, who, who, who convert are usually coming from Christianity. And what we have to do to get to the point of to, in order to get to the point where we realize that the Torah, that the Torah is true, we have to through a lot of research and spiritual. Uh, uh, seeking is to remove that klipa. All of those shtuyot that we that we learned about the Bible, right? Because we saw the 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 Bible through the lens of the klipa. Mm. And once we remove it, it took us for us to deprogram a lot of things. The Trinity, Yashke, all of that for us to just see the truth. So it's like removing a klipa to finally get the fruit, right? So Christianity is that klipa. Now, during the Enlightenment, right, Europe rejected the klipa of Zah. Mm. But, but the thing is, by rejecting the klipa of, of Zah, it's not like they rejected the klipa of Zah and then accepted the fruit, which would just be uh, uh, Judaism. They just rejected the klipa of Zah. Right, and went for reason, science. Yeah. In doing that, basically, what they uh, they uh, did, they they distanced themselves from the Torah values that they were living. Maybe not how it 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 should be, but there were Torah values that they held to. Right. Once they rejected that, what they uh, did, they rejected the sun. Right, mm. and the thing is, if you're not uh, 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 under the power of the sun, yeah. you're going to be under the power of the moon. Right. Yeah. So once they rejected the sun, which is Torah, which was in in their case Christianity, they automatically placed themselves under the uh, under the domination of the moon, yeah. of the female. You're saying sun is masculine? Yes. Right? Sure, sure. So, so, so basically, what was the result of that? 
several several generations later, right? What rose up? The feminist movement in the late, uh, I would say, the late 18, 1800s, early the 1900 rose what we call first wave feminism. And what did they want back then? Political rights. They wanted to be the political and legal equals of men, right? What they wanted was to disrupt the natural, I'll say. I'm gonna look at it when yeah, I get to yeah. What they wanted to do was to disrupt the natural order of uh, things, which is the sun, the moon receives from the sun. They wanted to be on par with the sun. And it worked because Europe or the Western world had, had um, distanced itself from Christianity and for the Klippa of Zah and the Torah values that they were holding, automatically they placed themselves under the domination of the moon. So therefore, these women who suddenly wanted political rights, it was because of this, because the moon was dominant and they got that and we know the rest of the story where today basically women rule the world you can't move your pinky you can't say a single thing you can't make a joke you can't look at a woman the wrong way she can destroy your entire your life your uh, your 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 uh, job where men are really now in the western world under the, the domination of the women we, we see it also in um, the divorce court where women are basically, I'd say more than 85% of the time, they're, they're going to get everything. Rights to the children, rights to the house, right? That's because the Western world 200 years ago placed themselves under the domination of the moon. So therefore, naturally, women are going to be culturally and politically dominant, right? Uh, so a very interesting thing we know that is a, a um, characteristic of women is that the givoire, right? And, and what happens is that women have good intentions, but it always manifests in itself in a way that's very strict. For example, um, things like, um, things like uh, the, LG, the, the, the LGBTQ com, com, community, right? So the feminist movement, the LG, uh, LGBTQ community are, let's say, uh, political allies, right? What they basically say is that, and, it, and it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very a female way of, of thinking, we have to create a society or an environment where everybody feels safe, everybody feels uh, in, 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 in included, right? Which is a very theme female way of thinking. Men were more um, aggressive, were more um, competitive, where it's the one who's stronger, smarter, or whatever, is the one who will get the, 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 the status, right? Whether it's, it's a pull, political status, social status, right? Women think more in a collectivist view. Everybody needs to get something, right? So for example, the LGBTQ community and the uh, f um, uh, f uh, feminist movement in, it, in a desire, which is, we can say a good one to make a society where 
everybody thrives and has a chance creates these laws and social trends that are very, very hard. Um, for example, let's say um, you don't use the proper pronoun for a person that identifies as a woman, right? Mm. Right, so if you don't do that, they claim that you're hurting them, right? You're hurting their, their feelings. Then they post you on Facebook, Instagram, the whole thing. They dox you, as, as they say. They tell people where you, you live, what you do, right? And they put tremendous social pressure on you through social media to, to punish you for not respecting that person's personal um, feelings. So the idea looks good, right? We want to protect you people but the application is very harsh which is a a, char a characteristics of the female a lot of times their intentions are very good but the applications of it are very harsh that's why women and men need to work together because the male energy which as you know this is this the female would be give one male would be chesed Right, so the good thing when women and men and women work together, or when men lead and women follow, what that creates is a society that's balanced because the male way of thinking will sweeten the gevura of the female. When you don't have that, you have these very, very crazy situations that are not happening okay now how does this relate to islam it's like this so we have the rise of the female or female um political and, and social power in europe and in the u.s and in the rest of the western world but at the same time strangely the muslims in places like France, Britain, uh, Germany, <laughs> most of the Western world have a tremendous amount of power. And you, you might ask yourself, why? And we also see s something even stranger that when it comes to, um, when it comes to, uh, to the whole issue involving the state of Israel and the Muslims, who's always on their side, feminists and the left, which seems very strange because when you look at Islam, their values and their way of life is like a direct contradiction to the, the values and the way of life and the vision of the left. So why would they right, be uh, aligning with themselves with a religion that wouldn't even allow them to exist if they were living on uh, uh, um, if they were living in an Islamic um, as, um, as, as society. This is because Islam is spiritually just like feminism and the left rooted in the moon, and that's the reason why their symbol is Dafka, the moon. How so? Now, there's several points, how so? So the first point we made was that their symbol is the moon. And, and, and that is a very, very big clue. The symbol that a person or a society or a movement chooses uh, as a, I, as a, as a, as a way to identify them tells you a, a lot about who they are. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a few facts about is is Islam that you can find out if you do the research. Islam was started, as we all know, by a guy named. 
Muhammad. Okay. Ibn Abdullah. Okay. Now what's his story? So when Muhammad married, or when he was, um, so he, he, uh, so when he was, uh, he was an Arab man who lived, uh, say, 1500, 1500 years ago in the Arabian Peninsula, today called Saudi Arabia, okay? And uh, he was from a city called Mecca, okay? Where he was born and he was raised. So the story goes like this. When he was 25, he married a woman called Khadija. Khadija. He married a woman called Khadija. At that time, she was 40. And Muhammad was 25, okay? And um, she was a very wealthy woman. And from all accounts, it was a, it was a happy marriage. Now, according to the Islamic tradition, Muhammad from the age of 25 had a had a, would go several weeks during the year in the desert to specific to a, a cave and and basically he would uh, pray there and he would he would always go at night okay why is that sig sig significant because according to our Torah tradition night is also feminine the whole concept of, of night is feminine which makes sense because the moon which rules the night is all is is a, 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 a feminine um, a symbol now when he was 40 the story goes that he was doing one of these um, prayer retreats, if you if you will, in a cave at night. And he claims that the angel Gabriel appeared to him, right, and 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 gave him the first, the very first revelation of the. Quran, okay, at night in a cave, okay, what, so what can we learn from here, who's Gavriel, he's the angel of Gvura, if you write Gavriel in Hebrew, let me just, let me just write Gavriel in Hebrew, Gavriel is like this, Gav, Gabriel, right? You guys can, you can see. Gvura, here. You see here? This is the root of the word Gvura, okay? So Gabriel is the angel who's in charge of Gvura, Deen, justice, right? And Gabriel is the angel who revealed or According to their their uh, story, he is the angel who revealed all of the all of the Quran to Muhammad, right? So the angel of Gvura, so excess, he receives a visitation at night, which is feminine, from the angel. Gabriel, which is the angel of Gvura, and we know that feminine and Gvura are a uh, femininity and Gvura are the same thing, right? So already 
from the start, we can see that the spirituality of Islam is feminine because the prophet receives his revelation in a completely feminine aspect at night from the angel of Gvura, right? And in Islam, he's called the angel of revelation. So we can see that from the very start, Islam is completely rooted in spiritually in the in the in the female. I just uh, forgot to make one point that to uh, to a day the political left, which is basically the um, which is basically the political arm or the polit the political weapon of the feminist movement is called the left, which is very interesting because we know that the female is the left side. Gvura, the female, is the left side. And today, the, the political, uh, as you say, the political uh, perspective associated with feminine Unity today is the left. That's just that's just a, a very interesting point to uh, to uh, to uh, to see. So back to Islam. So now we see that all of Islam is rooted in the female. One more. Uh, one more point. We know that. We have a, a Torah Shebal Peh, uh, sorry, a Torah Shebertav, a written Torah, and the Torah Shebal Peh, a oral one. So we know that Torah Shebertav, the written Torah, is masculine. For example, just like we know that, uh, yeah, so the written Torah is masculine, right? And the Torah Shebal Peh, the oral Torah is the feminine, right? And uh, so the Torah Shebal Tav would be represented by um, the sun, and the Torah Shebal Peh would be represented by the moon. So with us, we have a balance. We have both the sun, Torah Shebal Tav, and the moon, Torah She Bal Peh, and it's a balance between the uh, two. Christianity is only represented by the sun, right? It only has Torah She It doesn't have Torah She Bal Peh, which is the moon. And Islam is the opposite. It doesn't have Torah She Bal Tav, it only has Torah She Bal Peh. What I mean by, by that is that by Christianity, they say, we only believe what is written in the Bible, in the Torah, and that's it. All this idea of, to of Torah Sheba Peh is made up. You guys are saying things that are not in the text. They always are rooted in the text. If it's not in the text, it's not real. That's because they are entirely rooted in the aspect of the sun, the male. Torah Shebertav. And because they re and because they reject the female, therefore they reject Torah Shebal Peh. Right? And they say that Chas Shalom, the rabbis made the whole thing up. Now in Islam, what they will say is this. Um, that the written text of the Tanakh that we have is fake. It's a corruption. What do they mean by, by that? That Moshe Rabbeinu gave us a Torah. Now we Jews over centuries corrupted it. And now the text of the Torah that we have today is a corruption of what Moshe Rabbeinu, uh, Moshe Rabbeinu 
originally gave us God forbid. That's why they still respect Moshe Rabbeinu, and he's called one of the, he's considered a prophet in their worldview, in their religion, but they say that the Torah, that we have today, uh, uh, is not the real one, right? So they completely reject the son, the Torah Shibachtav, the written. Torah, right? And instead, they have, they replaced it with their own book called the Quran, as we know. Now, the interesting thing about the Quran is that it's, it's really, Islam, as you said, is, is, is rooted in the feminine. So therefore, it's really rooted entirely in this idea of Torah Shebaal Peh, how? Now, um, one of the claims for the uh, authentic, authenticity of the prophethood of Muhammad is, is, is what? That he didn't know how to read or write. Why is that sig significant? For several reasons, that means he wasn't able to read or write. He was completely disconnected from this idea of Torah Shebechtav, of the written Torah, of the masculine, of the son. He was completely disconnected from that because he didn't know how to read or write. So that when allegedly Gabriel reveals himself to him at night, right? In the cave, he's, he's only speaking, right? And he says to him, write this down. And they say that Muhammad said back, I can't because I can't read or, or I, mean, I, I don't know how to, right? So all of the, so basically this is what happened. He was allegedly receiving these prophecies from Gabriel, the angel of Guvuha, completely orally it was a completely oral transmission which is feminine and then he started to preach and gather us as um, as um, as students but it was completely oral there was no text right it was only after his death that his followers his closest ones wrote down what they remembered but while he was alive, right? He was complete. His 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 um, his prophethood, if you if you will, was completely an oral one. So it was completely rooted in Torah Shebaal Peh, the oral Torah, right? And therefore, completely again rooted in the moon and rooted in the female. Okay, so that's another indication that Islam is feminine because the prophet could not read or write. Okay, now the let's get back to the story. He he's re, he's receiving this revelation, this oral revel, revelation from Gabriel, the angel of Gvura, at night, right? Uh, um, and then he comes back home and he's completely freaked out. He thinks he went crazy and he's frightened. He thinks that a, a demon and it's, it's which something that's very interesting. He was scared that a demon revealed himself, re revealed itself to him, right? And he, and he goes to his, wife and he says I don't know what's happening I'm crazy I saw these things I'm, I'm uh, frightened and his wife Khadija right is the she's the one that convinces him he's a prophet so he didn't even come to that re re realization on his own it was a woman who convinced him that he was a prophet right? and then he believes her 
and he and he continued to have these revelations and started to preach. Right. So why is that significant? Is that the the his own faith in his prophethood came from his wife. So he was relying on the da'at of a woman. So basically, and she and she was also the first believer and his greatest, um, let's say, uh, po political, because she was a, pro a prominent woman and, fin and financial, because she was very rich. But she, she, she was the primary person who was backing him, right? A woman, right? So again, you can say that he gained his prophethood based on the, 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 the wisdom of a woman. So again, another instance of Islam being rooted in the, in the feminine, okay? So where are we, uh, are we right now? The feminine. Yes. Okay. So so far, I think we've we've painted a very clear picture how Islam is rooted is basically entirely rooted in the feminine. It's a feminine religion. An interesting thing is that the night that he claims to have received the prophecy from Gabriel. What is it called in their religion? It's called, let me, let me just check because I want to get, get it right. I'm not going to try to say it in the original language because I don't speak it. But the trans translation is basically, it's called the night of power or decree. That's what it's called. If you would translate this, the night of power into Hebrew, you would get Halayla Halayla Shel Gvura Gvura the halayla shel gvura, the night of gvura, or the night of din. And we know that din and gvura is again feminine. So we see over and over and over again within their own religious tradition how everything is rooted in the feminine. Okay? Uh, a, a point about the uh, Quran that the Quran is called um, let's see let's see the Quran is called by several names or calls itself by several names okay two we're gonna gonna focus on for the purpose of our limud okay one it is called the the Quran describes itself, right? If you read the, the if I'm not saying you should read it, but if you have read it, you would you would see that uh, the Quran calls itself as uh, Al Furqan, which in Arabic means the the, the discernment, the discernment. So discerning, right? What, what does it mean to discern something? To tell one thing from another. This is blue, this is red, this is, this is tall, this is short, right? What's that? That is called Bina, right? Bina is basically a person's ability to take Chokhmah, which is expansive has no no beginning and no end 
and then to when 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 Chochma goes into Bina, basically Bina takes Chochma, right? Bin, Bina takes Chochma, and then um, how, how can you say? It? Makes a discernment, uh, um, brings it. How how can you say this? Makes a discernment like uh, it takes Chochma and then applies it in the here and now makes logical applications of it makes distinctions right b bina is where the light of chokma starts to be distinguished right it's where the idea of multiplicity starts and then in in gvura it gets stronger so the quran calls itself the discernment so in a sense it could be as it's if it's, it's calling itself Bina, right? It's calling itself Bina. And Bina is where multiplicity or Gvura starts. So again, a testimony from their religious tradition that they're rooted in the feminine, right? And, and in just the last thing, is another very uh, where is it it is called it was here so i'm just checking ah and this is i just learned this today and i've been, I've been planning to give this here since last week i just saw this today around calls itself sorry that's i want you guys to see this the Quran calls itself Um, what's it called? Um, sorry, Al Kitab. Um Al Kitab, which means in English, you guys won't believe this. It means in English, the mother book. The Quran calls itself the mother book. I don't think we need any more proof than, than, than that to see that uh, the Quran and the religion it spreads is feminine because the Quran calls itself itself the mother. Okay? Um, um, yeah, so, so I think we've, uh, we've painted a, 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 ver a very good, um, uh, a very solid case for the fact that Islam, right, is basically the feminine. It's a Can can. can. can Rabbi Akiva, uh, I want to know: Is it said that uh, the Quran called himself like like itself like that, or is it uh, the Muslim who gave that name to her? So here, from what I'm from the research I've I've done, is that uh, it's the Quran. Wow. Okay. Perfect. That the Quran calls it itself. I, I, it, it, it doesn't show where exactly, but it says here that the Quran calls itself the mother book, right? Mm -hmm. Which, which is, which is a, which, which is a very interesting thing. Um, just again, uh, just not really. The more I'm um, not. I'm not going to say it's more circumstantial evidence I'm going to give at this point, but for ex 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 example, uh, the only descendants, so Muhammad had several children, I think seven. All of his boys, he had three boys, all of them died as children, and none of them, they, they died like one died at two, one died at three, one died at uh, seven. So n none of them grew up to adulthood and had ch ch children. All of his de his descendants are descendants of his daughters, right? And any des descendant of Muhammad today is a descendant of Mo Muhammad through his daughters. So even his legacy is feminine. Now you might ask me, okay, this is great, 
but it seems strange because um, uh, Islam is has the repute, has seemingly has the reputation for two things: the very warlike, and second of all, has the reputation that with their women they're not the most um, kind, if you will, right? That it seems from the exterior, it's a very patriarchal, male dom dominated re re religion. Now, in terms of why Islam is so warlike, we know that Islam is feminine, which is gvura, and it's completely feminine. So it makes sense that the uh, believers in this religion would be warlike because they're completely rooted and are com coming from an unbalanced gvura, okay? And, uh, and, and that's why, in, in, this, in, in my op opinion, that's why I think the concept of jihad is such a central component of their religious, uh, of their religious uh, system, because jihad is the expression, the strongest physical expression of war, of gevura, war. There's nothing more gevura than war, and they made it essential, um, essential. I'm not gonna say a pillar per se, but essential theme in their re. Religion, and even if you want to say no, jihad is not always physical war, as some Muslims say that jihad is about the internal struggle that you have with yourself to be a good individual. But still, there's this idea of struggle, gvura, whether it's with yourself or whether it's with with the outside. Um, some, um, and then. The second point about it seems that like the that the religion is male dom domin dominated. So it seems to contradict this whole idea that we've built. That's not true because, as I've said, that um, something that we've learned from uh, the Roshi Shiva about the nature of the female is that women amongst themselves are very, very prone to fighting, right? Um, because again, they give gvura. So people who have a lot of gvura, people who are rooted in that, it's very hard for them to get all, all along with other, other people because the more the more gvura you have, the more sensitive you become. So people think that, you know, this female sense of, the sensitivity that women have is because they're chesed, I don't know. The sensitivity that they have, or sometimes the oversensitivity that they have is because they're gvura. When you're gvura, you're very particular about how people speak to you, how people treat you, because if somebody treats you in a way that uh, is not, uh, that you don't think is just, right? Because you're gvura, you're going to take it very, very hard, right? So because the Muslim men are, are operating and thinking from a female perspective and they're rooted in a female religion, Therefore, when they're interacting with their wives, it's not really a man interacting with a woman. It's a woman interacting with a woman. And as Rabbi Pintras taught us, when unfortunately, when women interact, there's always a lot of conflict. So that's why in Islam, women are tend to be very... Um, as um, as 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 suppressed, and why men are so 
hard with 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 with, with them and and de demand a lot of respect from from them because they're operating from this gvura point of view, right? Um, what else I want to say? Yes, I just wanted to show something that I thought about uh, today concerning um, Haga when when she's fleeing from uh, as 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 Sarah. Now uh, it's just an idea that I had to to uh, to a day, and uh, I would appreciate if. Rabbi Pinchas told me whether or not it holds up, but it says here, uh, an angel of Hashem found her by the spring of water in the spring on the road to Shul. And he said, Hagar, maid servant of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you? going and she said i am running away from sarai my mistress and an angel of hashem said to her return to your mistress and submit yourself to her dom her domination uh and and an angel of hashem said to her i will greatly increase your offspring and they will not be count, counted for abundance. And an angel of Hashem said to her, Behold, you will conceive and give birth to a son. You shall, na you shall name him Yishmael, for Hashem has heard your prayer. And he shall be a, a wild ass of a man, his hand, his hand against everyone, and everyone's hands against him. And over all his brothers, he shall dwell. Okay, so what I want to focus on is where it says, on these two pesukim, where it says, and an, and, and an angel of Hashem said to her, return to your mistress and submit yourself to her domination. So the I, idea that I have is that basically what is... What is the religion of Muhammad called? It's called Islam, which means submission or or you could say submission to the will of God. Okay. Now why is this significant because it seems to me why would he call his religion Islam right he could have called it anything else to submit I think it's the root of that is what the the angel told Hagar his great 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 grand father what did the angel in fact say Look, if you want to flourish, if you want to get bracha from Hashem, right, and have this son, right, who will, who's going to become great, he's going to have many, many descendants, he's going to become a uh, people, right? You have to go back to your mistress and submit, right? In Hebrew, it's mehit um, Right to it's like when you you fast and you're making yourself zero, right? But we do that we make ourselves zero, our ego, our yet zero in order to fix ourselves, right? So it seems that this idea of submission, Muhammad took this idea from submission and applied it, if you want, in the side of the klipa, right, where Islam. That's basically that, where to be a Muslim is to make yourself zero, completely nothing for the will of Hashem, right? And the root of, and, and why would Muhammad think that that's what God wants, 
right? From him and from his people, because it's from this pasuk here, right? Whether he read the pasuk or or not, but he's rooted in that. He, in a way, he understood that in order for his his people to flourish, they needed to submit, right? And then they would be great, right? But here, what he didn't understand, they, they needed to, to submit to the Bene Yitzchak, to the Bene Yisrael, to, to the Torah, right? Right? But, and, and then they would of, 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 of flourish. So you, you can see how, how um, this idea of submission in order to get Shefa is deeply, deeply, deeply rooted in the psych, uh, in the spirituality, in the shoresh of the of the bene yish yish shmael, which they get from the promise that Hashem made to her. And then to finish, I would just like to speak about the five pillars of Islam. No, actually, about the five pillars of Islam and also about the name that the Bene Yishmael use for their God. The name they use is Allah. Okay. From the research I did, researchers, researchers basically say, but what's the root of this word here, of this name here, Allah? It can be compared to the Aramit, right? Elaha, uh, Allah, Elah, which means God and God, right? And it's also related to the Hebrew, okay? A, no, Elo, Elohim. So Elaha, Elohim is, is related to the word Allah. And we know that the word Elohim, right, is the word that we use when we want to relate to Hashem or Hashem is relating to, to us in the aspect of Din, right? And that is the essential name, that is the top name, right? Like we have uh, Yud, K, Vav, K. And we say, if you will, this is the top name for which everything derives from. And then you have other names that Hashem used, but this is the essential name, which is Kulo Chesed. For the Muslims, the essential name is Allah, which is basically in Hebrew would be Elohim. To them, that's, that's the essential, I don't want to say nature of Hashem, but, but for the sake of the Shio, essential, it is the best perspective that you can have on Hashem. He is Elohim, he's the God of Din, right? So they, that's how they view. Uh, yes, yes, they say that he's a, 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 a Rahman and, and, all, and all these things, sure. But the essential way they view God is Elohim, Din, right? And that makes sense because uh, a, 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 again, this, I, this idea of submission, right? And to submit oneself, we, you have to have a lot of gvura because you have to say no to what you want in order to do the will of someone else or of Hashem. It's all rooted in the, in the name Elohim. Okay? And so now, so now what, what, what have we learned so far? I think We've uh, painted a pretty convincing picture of how Islam as a religion, right, is is completely rooted in the feminine. It's a it's a 
for lack of a better term, a woman's religion, a, a feminine re, 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 uh, religion, just one last point. Their calendar, for example, we have a, a solar and a lunar calendar. We use both, right? The Christians use a solar one and the Muslims, their calendar is lunar. Again, another, another in, indication of where their uh, roots are, right? So basically, how again, so all of this, how this, how does this, this relate to feminism and the left? They're all from the same source, right? They're all different expressions of the same spiritual energy, the energy of the moon. And that's why, as you said before, in Europe, at a time where women have, have, have never had so much political and social power, right? And the left is very, very strong, right? It's Dafka at a time like this, that Islam is everywhere in France, Germany, England. It's just, it's everywhere, right? Because basically, from my under, understanding, fem, f feminism and the left is the goof, right? And Islam is really the, the soul, right? So, 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 yeah, so that, that's, that's base, base, basically it. So one always goes with the other. And that's why, uh, again, we see in, in geopolitical um, events concerning Am Israel in this country here in Eretz Israel. And the Muslims, right? It's always the left and the feminist who, who strangely at first would think always um, defend and advocate for uh, adherence of a religion that wouldn't even let them live the way they, they uh, live if they were living under their political control. So you, you would ask yourself, why is the left? It's about progressiveness and inclusiveness and women's rights and gays' rights, they can do what you want. Why would they uh, ally themselves with the Muslims, really? It would make more sense for them to ally themselves with the secular state of Israel that has the same values, right? And, and that's something I asked myself for, for years. I couldn't figure it out until last week, Hashem was very, was uh, kindly gave me this chid that even though from a superficial view, it would seem like the most nonsensical thing. But now through the eyes of Torah, we can understand that of course, they, they're coming from the same source. They're just two different expressions of the same source. So naturally the uh, uh, a liberal is going to feel in a, affinity to pe to either the re the religion or 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 people who follow that religion and defend it as a religion of uh, peace and and uh, all and all of uh, all of uh, that so just to wrap it up I will also just like to touch on a point um, I think it's an important point that uh, that um, ties into the African-American ex experience and the rise of Islam and the popularity of Islam within that uh, group. Now we know that when African slaves were brought to the United States, right? And sold into plantations, plan it was a very traumatic thing, right? And even when their slave masters 
allowed them to form families. It wasn't really families. We just, they were told, look, you go with her and make me a child so you can work in my field or I can uh, uh, sell him, right? So now you had a society of slaves that had that basically what happened, a child would be born. He would either, she, he or she would either not know who their father was because it was just, you know, I'm going to be with you for one, for one time and that's it. Or even if they knew who the father was, you know, he could live with them for five years and then be sold some place else. So really from the get-go, women really are the ones that took care of the children. Women are the ones that educated the, the children because for various reasons, the father just couldn't be there, right? It wasn't a, a stable situation. So that's from the start. So now, even after slavery and they're free, uh, um, there was a concerted effort to take the father out of the home, out of the black home. A uh, way they did that is uh, a, a Netflix documentary uh, about it. Um, when the South lost the Civil War and they lost their slaves, they were, they were in very big trouble, right? First of all, they lost the uh, war. Their economy was destroyed because of the war and their labor force was gone. So how, how, were, they, how were they going to re, rebuild? What they did is that they exploited the 13th um, amendment to the, to the United States con, constitution, which basically said, which is basically was supposed to be an anti-slavery um, amendment that says that no man born uh, who lives in the United States could be owned or sold as a slave regardless of race. But they said, however, an, uh, a prisoner in a prison could be used as a slave, could be forced to do slave labor. So the Southern states say, aha, now we know how we're going to get them back. They, they were very mid that deck. They were very, in, to the very, the very strict on the black people still living in the South and found basically any reason to put them in prison for the tiniest things. You know, uh, I don't know. They crossed this, this, the a street where they're not supposed to cross the street, jail. They did. They did a minor in a fraction. Maybe they forgot. They forgot to pay a, a fine. Jail, right? They would find any any time a black man did something against the law, no matter how small it it was, they were sent to jail. And even if it was a, a crime, they were giving the strictest uh, sentences. Something that for a white man he would be in jail for maybe a, a year, a, a black man, it was five. Why did they do that? Because they wanted these men in jail so they could work. And through that slave labor, they were actually able to rebuild the South, meaning it was one of the tools that they used. So again, what, but what did that do, right? It took the, the black man out of the home. So again, you had children being raised by the mother and you don't need, even need to speak about all the hor horrible things that KKK did to black men, right? Um, uh, and 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 uh, and uh, such, which basically resulted in men not being in these homes. And then basically, basically, this was the sit situation until today, where unfortunate. Unf 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 I think the statistic I heard once, like. 
80% of black children in the United States grow up without a father. So why am I talking uh, 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 about this? It's because what this does is that you have these boys and girls growing under solely under a female inf of 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 affluence, a female spiritual influence for generation after generation. So the perspective, even for the boys, is feminine, right? So, so now we can understand the rise of the rise of and the popularity of. Uh, Excuse-moi, Kiva, tu peux me basculer dans ma salle, s'il te plaît? Oui, oui, oui. Merci. De rien. Et tu basculeras les gens qui arriveront, s'il te plaît, merci. Oui, oui, oui. So, so, we can understand the rise of the nation of Islam. Why was the nation of Islam so big? Why did it have why did it have such a strong cultural, spiritual, political influence on black people in the United States? And it, and it played a huge role. Can I say it was finally yeah, no. no, so one huge thing was you have the people that were taken from a predominant place where they were the primordial. Um, population, yeah. right? Enslaved, uh -huh. so still around majority population that looked like them, uh -huh. but surrounded by these ancillary groups that didn't look like them, uh -huh. and then given a religion uh -huh. where, again, everyone in the building practicing it looked like them, uh -huh. but the main figure didn't look like uh -huh. them. So when it came to Islam, and it's like, oh, Farrakhan, you know, brothers in suits, whatever, whatever, yeah. it's like, Names that don't sound European, I was like, yeah, yeah we're doing yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no regard to the literature, yeah. the, the the documents, whatever, but yeah. just like this guy looks like me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm in. Yeah. You know, and it's funny because I, you know, I have you know, friends or close friends, relatives that like converted or you know, transitioned to Islam. Mm -hmm. You know, they hold nothing Islamic. Mm -hmm. But Muhammad in the kitchen making shrimp sandwiches <laughs> and the whole night, and he's like, Psh. Hey, we just was against the white man, you know? Yeah. And for them, it was that simple. Again, the civil rights movement, for yeah. many, I think also the experience Excuse of- Excuse-moi. Oui, oui. Akiva, tu penses finir à quelle heure? Bientôt, là. Um, the experience- 10 minutes, un quart d'heure? Ouais, 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 ouais. Sorry, I'm Un quart d'heure? No, dans 10 minutes. Pour okay, merci. No, more. Right? no, I was gonna yeah. say too, you know, I think the experience in America is also dramatically different depending on the region you're in, right? So Southern, Christians uh -huh. had a way different experience because they were still primarily in yeah. towns where they were mixed population yeah. versus like East Coast Christians yeah. or Midwest Christians that had a different than experience. I don't think many of the Southern African Americans converted to Islam, mm -hmm. but East Coast, Philly, Jersey, New York, Baltimore, Delaware, DC, you know, for sure they did, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, ah, you know, Pittsburgh, etc. Wouldn't you say that the East Coast is really the movers and, sh and the sh uh, shakers? Yeah, I'm just saying that was after the Industrial Revolution. Population-wise, there's still more Afro-Americans in Alabama, Mississippi, uh, Georgia, mm -hmm. Florida, Texas, Louisiana. You know, mm -hmm. no question. And they didn't convert to Islam. Mm -hmm. That wasn't even like a... You know, there's no staunch. But the point I'm, 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 I'm making is not that everyone, really, yeah. But where does this idea of Islam deeper? Where why would they feel right? So I'm saying on the East Coast they had access to news. In the South, like things move a lot slower. So there was no, you know, fair con There weren't no temples in in Birmingham. You know what I'm saying? There were Baptist preachers. So in the South you had the African Methodist Episcopal Amy Zion Church. You had sort of black churches that then made those people feel like, ah, I can still be Christian because we got our own denomination. On the East Coast, that wasn't so much a thing. It was like, ah, you know, Nation of Islam, ah, I'm, I'm with yeah, this. You have to agree that the Nation of Islam had tremendous influence. Ton of respect for them. First on, of all, where else did you see on, brothers on, in suits, 
you know, speaking better, you know, aspiring, yeah. communal support. I mean, you can still say in America, I don't know anybody that surpassed the nation of Islam from a street credibility standpoint to an efficacy standpoint of presenting and creating well presenting familial structure and communal structure that's uncompromising and is self-sufficient. I mean, they do business together. I mean, yes, they're yes. like, hey, yeah. we're in our own world. Yeah. You can't say that about the black church. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thank you. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so basically just to finish, I'll say this, to give a more uh, deeper perspective on it, that as Rabbi Zakhar said, even though not, not, it's not that like all of them can can avert it, which is just that the nation of Islam had a very very powerful influence on on African American history. Uh, why would African Americans feel uh, a, a attraction to a to a religion like is is Islam, which many years ago was almost of of foreign to the United States just because they've been living for so long under a a female uh, a female perspective because of, of the lack of males right or the absence of, of, of males for various reasons of their community that they that deep down they felt a natural attraction to a, spirit, a spirituality that's feminine. So yes, so that's basically the shiur. I hope uh, it was informative, and uh, I uh, I hope to have further limudim. Um, and discussions uh, with you like this in the future. So thank you for your for your time and see you the next time. Baruch Adonai Le'olam, Amen, Amen.